don't forget to like and subscribe. Hello, my name is Dr. Bob McCauley. Um, I'm a naturopathic doctor. I own the Watershed Wellness Center up here in Lansing, Michigan. And uh, I wanted to talk to you today about raw fruits and vegetables and um, and why you want to live on a raw food diet and why it's so important. Um, I live on a raw food diet. I'm a vegan. I don't eat any meat, fish, eggs, or dairy. I'm going to dispel some of the myths about that um, on this little talk here today. Uh, I've done many, many talks through the years. Uh, I'm an author. Uh, this is my latest book, The Cure in the Mirror, Nature's Protocol for Surviving Cancer. Um, and I've written a whole bunch of books on health. One of them is uh, so it's on um, the, uh, the infectious diseases called silver, the miracle mineral, the end of infectious disease. I had meningitis, which is an absolute killer, 21% mortality rate compared to this crazy thing that went along, well, this virus that was around for the last uh, few years, and uh, it had a 0.04% mortality rate. So. Um, I write all sorts of things about natural health, how to build your immune system, but mainly what I wanted to talk about was uh, raw fruits and vegetables. One of the things I'm really known for, I don't know if I have a copy of it, my biggest book is called The Miraculous Properties of Ionized Water, The Definitive Guide to the World's Healthiest Substance. And if you ever get a chance, come up here to Lansing, I'm out by the airport, and, uh, and you can buy, it, buy that by the gallon or you can buy a water ionizer. But the reason I mention this and why I think it's so important is that alkaline ionized water is identical to raw fruits and vegetables in every single way, except there's no nutrients in the water. So it's a very powerful antioxidant and it has, just like raw fruits and vegetables, three very, uh, very strong antioxidant properties. It has an abundance of electrons, so it is, um, it's a free radical scavenger, um, so you don't get uh, free radical damage in the body. Um, it is. Uh, it has. It has a negative charge. Uh, what we call oxidate ORP, oxidation reduction potential. So that's reducing the oxidation of your body, just like raw fruits and vegetables. That's one of the keys to uh, longevity. Is you want to reduce the oxidation. The more you cook your foods, uh, the more oxi more oxidized they are, and the more um, you know the more the more um, deadly they really become because it, what they do is they accelerate the aging process and raw fruits and vegetables actually re reverse the aging process on a biological level. Um, and then it also has what they call molecular hydrogen or active hydrogen and uh, that is found and uh, we're starving for that. It's the, you know really the smallest molecule in the universe is hydrogen. And um, so it detoxifies you very well, but it does a lot more than that. And again, you'll see that in raw fruits and vegetables. It's also very alkalizing, like raw fruits and vegetables. And, um, and you know, it's also a very dehydrating, or de detoxifying. It pushes out all the things that don't belong in the body, which, in, which we refer to as toxins. So when you get sick, I'll put this out at the beginning, um, well, you know two things. You know that you're toxic. Okay, you know, you're full of things that don't belong in the body, and that's what disease lives on. And then you know that your body is acidic, and, uh, and, um, and so that's an indication. Um, disease, all disease lives in an acid environment, and it will not live in an alkaline environment. So I've been a raw foodist now, um, uh, and a vegan. Uh, I've been a vegetarian uh, about 42 years, and I've been a vegan around 20 and I've been a raw foodist, it's been over 20, 20 years now. It's been like the late 1990s, I hardly believe it. So I'm almost going 25 years. And just so you know, um, you know, whether or not you can survive on a, survive on a raw food diet, um, you know, I mean, people survive on McDonald's, okay? So, so people survive on garbage every day. Uh, and, and that's all they eat, you know, breakfast cereals, um, just, you know, garbage, there's nothing there. Most of them are just sugar. Uh, breakfast, almost all breakfast, breakfast cereals just turn into glucose and go, go right into your, your, right into your bloodstream. It's terrible. Um, and I don't eat breakfast, by the way. I don't think it's, I think it's a really bad thing to do first thing in the morning, uh, is to eat anything. You should be fasting and you should not be eating anything. Um, but we'll get into all that stuff maybe a, bit a little bit later. But I just wanted to start off with the ionized water because it's completely natural. It's everywhere in nature and it is identical to raw fruits and vegetables, only there are no uh, nutrients in the water. 
So again, if you ever come up here to Lansing, you know, stop on by and uh, we will, uh, you can buy it by the gallon or you can buy a water ionizer. I have it on tap. First thing I do in the morning, I have a big tall glass of water, uh, you know, eight ounces there and I have another one. Um, I never drink more than one liter of water per hour and um, and then um, you'll be fine. That's the most your body can process, one liter or one quart per hour. But uh, why do we want to eat raw fruits and vegetables? Well, there's some people never live on that. Everybody cooks their food, in particular animal protein. Um, you don't need animal protein, uh, meat, fish, eggs, and dairy, okay? Um, you know, uh, people, that's the number one reason. I was just watching a video. Um, I can't remember the name of the uh, YouTube channel, but it's really good. It's something like food's poison or something like that, or uh, I have to go back and look. But that was an uh, interesting video about how, you know, really how we're programmed uh, to eat all these different types of food and how they've really been, is this so much propaganda um, behind uh, the foods that we eat. Like for instance, people got, you get up in the morning eating bacon eggs, bacon and eggs. Well, you know, the reason uh, people ate so many bacon, so much bacon and eggs when they woke, when they, in the morning, because that's what was available. And so many people were farmers. And if they, even if they weren't farmers, they had chickens. And that's when chickens lay their eggs in the morning. So they get up in the morning and they have some eggs and then bacon was able to be cured. So, you know, you didn't have to go out and, you know, kill a pig for it or anything. You always had it on hand. So that, that was what was on hand. And, you know, cereal, nobody had heard about cereal. And there was this, really, this is all this Edward Bernays, who was the kind of the, the founder, if you will, or the creator of propaganda. And that's all the breakfast is is propaganda you know what what are you gonna eat in the morning it's, it's propaganda now people go to Starbucks and we talk about you know serve can you survive on a raw food diet I know you can people survive on Starbucks <laughs> you know Starbucks is just McDonald's that sells coffee so that's that's the only thing the only difference that that's there and you don't want to know where they get all those beans those coffee beans because it's not a pretty it's not a pretty story it's pretty terrible because uh, they, they, they've got this massive uh, worldwide network. And so where they get these things is really terrible. I'm going to talk to you about where you want to have the source of your food, know your source of your food, but um, and you should know. Uh, um, and just I don't want to focus on these two foods, spirulina and chlorella. These are two types of algae. Really, spirulina is a cyanobacteria, but these are the most powerful foods in the world, and they're 60% protein. So if you're going to become a vegan, this is what you want to add to your diet. Now, again, I've been, I've been a vegetarian 42 years, and um, I'm 65 years old, and I run a six-minute mile. Um, I haven't had my blood work done in a little while, maybe a year or two, but um, actually I had it done last year. It's perfect. I don't have, I've never been on a medication. I'm full of energy. I feel great all the time. And this is just, these are not the things that, you know, you just led to believe you've got to have these foods in your diet. And animal protein, meat, fish, egg, egg, meat, fish eggs, and dairy, those are the ones that really ha we have been programmed and we have been, uh, you know, really brainwashed, you know, in not only by, you know, propaganda and propagandists such as Kellogg's and all these people and posts who make all these cereals, but by the people we love the most. I mean, because they've been brainwashed. That's our, our parents, our mothers and our fathers, our grandfathers and grandmothers. <clears throat> they teach us to eat this way. And so, um, you know, I grew up on a meat and potato diet up here in Lansing. And um, then I was in India and I became a vegetarian. Well, that was my first step toward health. Um, and that was in 1980. I'll tell you something, in 1980, nobody had ever heard of a vegetarian. They, nobody, they just couldn't believe that you don't eat meat, you know, and they'd say, no, you, you eat chicken, right? No, that would be meat. And so they just, you know, had no clue why anybody would not be eating meat. And um, or how could you live that way? And where do you get your protein? Well, you get your protein from spirulina and chlorella. That's where I get mine. And it is vastly superior to animal protein. And um, they, that really goes hand in hand if you're going to become a raw foodist. Um, and see the value of it. It's not just, you know, preference. I just like to eat a lot of raw fruits and vegetables. I mean, if I could sit down every night and have a pizza, <laughs> it would be a pizza. I wish a pizza was healthy. It's not. Pizza's garbage. I wish it wasn't. Uh, a nice big burger. I always grew up on burgers and hot dogs. I, I was born to cook. I was standing on a 
stove and cooking at five years old. I could outcook my mother um, by the time I was 10, believe me. And uh, I was making uh, tur- the all Thanksgiving dinner and all that stuff by the time I was 13. I, I could do all of it. Um, and so through the years, I learned that, um, well, you know, it's just not the healthiest diet and people really don't like me for saying these things. And in particular, they when you say you don't want meat in your diet, they attack me. And that, that just goes along with it. I, I don't care. I'm the one who's healthy. I'm the one who never has to worry. I know I'm going to die, but I'm not going to die of a disease. And I don't think you hear too many people say that in, 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 in your lifetime. I'm not going to die of a disease. I know I'm going to die. God's going to take me when he wants, but I'm not going to die of a disease. That's it. I won't do it uh, because I know that the body can cure itself of any, any disease. Uh, you won't find chronic disease in the wild, um, and those animals in the wild live on a raw food diet, don't they? Yes, they do. They, they don't cook their foods out there in the wild. Nobody's ever shot a deer and brought it back and found it full of cancer, arthritis, high blood pressure, diabetes, fibromyalgia, any of these things. It just simply doesn't exist. Um, and in the wild. Um, and uh, we're, we're the only species on earth that gets any kind of chronic disease, okay, other than the animals we domesticate and put in a cooked food or, you know, puppy chow, cat chow diet, whatever. They get all the diseases we have when we feed them scraps from the table. It's the same thing. So um, you just won't find that, um, you know, infectious diseases in the wild. Now, you know, that's, that you know, viruses, bacteria, yeast, mold, and fungus, they're all, that's in the wild. That's out there. You see rabies is a good example of that. So we're susceptible to that, but that's when we got to build our immune system. But you can't build your immune system on a cooked food diet. So why do you want to eat raw fruits and vegetables? Well, first of all, like I always like to say, um, you know, God grew an apple and then we made a frying pan. So you can't improve on God's creation. And um, and that is thing, that apple, once you cook it, so you've got an apple here and then you cook it and, you know, now you've got a cooked apple. This is not the same substance at all. You have, it is a completely different chemical substance uh, once you've cooked that ad- apple. Okay, it's not the same thing. You have transformed it completely. And heat is a chemical reagent. So the idea that, you know, you just, you know, make it taste a little better. We can make it taste better. Like, I'd rather have an apple pie than just an apple. But, um, you know, a friend of mine, um, Miko, and uh, she made, in front of my face, made a raw apple pie in 10 minutes. The whole thing. 10 minutes. I mean, I was astonished, you know. There's some great cooks that, um, or un- we call them uncooks or uh, un- <laughs> uh, raw food chefs, better better term for them. And I can make some pretty good stuff myself in raw foods, um, raw food dishes, but nothing like I saw she made. She just took some seeds and, gro- and, and a few nuts and ground them up and that was the crust. And then she um, took some apples and chopped them up. She seasoned them. I think she might have added a little maple syrup. I can't remember. This is a long time ago. And there was one of the most delicious apple pies I have ever had in my life. And it was completely raw and fresh and nothing had been cooked. And and uh, really, you know, it, it was delicious. So there's things you can do. Um, my friend Moselle, who's uh, run, running this whole, uh, we're trying to put together a documentary to get this word out. Um, about uh, the great raw food diet and why it's so... uh, She makes the best pizza, raw food pizza. So, you know, and when you hear about a raw pizza or raw food pizza, it's not like a Domino's pizza that hasn't been put in the oven. Um, It's, this is all made from scratch and she ferments things. She can tell you how to do it. It's delicious. I mean, you you know, when when you ever go to like a raw food potluck, which I've been to many, many here, we had Cricket Lot up here in Lansing, and they still have a raw food potluck once a month. If you ever come up here, it's in, I did a talk at it recently. And um, and if you ever come up, you get get all that raw food, and these people actually have made like raw lasagna out of fruits and vegetables and all these dishes. I mean, it is so delicious. And then when you walk out of there, you are full and you're satisfied, but you're not like, you know, what I call turkey dinner full, like I ate so much, I just went to McDonald's, I'm stuffed, you know, you will be satisfied and you will, you it's healthy, you know. And uh, as I said, that's why I know I'm not going to die of a disease unless I stop eating raw fruits and vegetables, no intentions of um, 
of, of doing that. Now, um, you know, so you look at a raw food and, um, and it is, if it's just full of energy. And this is why when you cook it, you, it, you destroy this, this organic chemical structure and you remove, you destroy all the enzymes. You remove them from the food. It's the enzyme, everything we do, you talk, you blink, you walk, you do anything that is, um, you know, a, you, you know, it's, um, um, enzymic reactions. Just a little smile. This is a very complicated sequence of enzymic reactions within the body. And yet we all we do is we eat foods that are void of enzymes, um, which is not one of the smarter things we do because we're so we need electrons. And um, and those are gone too from uh, again, I go back to the ionized water is full of electrons. And, um, and if you look at, um, you know, the the uh, the other thing is enzymes. You're only going to find those in um, in raw fruits and vegetables. You won't find any other kind of um, uh, anywhere in the world that will, you know, only get, let's put it this way, only God can make an enzyme, you know, especially, you know, we can make enzymes that maybe work and clean things and everything, and we can produce those, but an enzyme that actually does like a, from a blade of grass, you can't make, we can't make a blade of grass. I mean, people... You know, we send people into space and we can do incredible things and all these supercomputers and all the stuff we got. We can't make a blade of grass. Again, that's a raw food. That's a raw, you know, and, you know, and, uh, you know, and then people eat wheatgrass juice, right? And, uh, you know, it's wheatgrass is what's always out there, but you can grass, you can juice any grass. Uh, your yard is a big banquet sitting there now of just food. It's a nutritional source. Uh, don't spray it with chemicals. Um, but you look at all the dandelions. We just had dandelion season. I love dandelions and I eat the greens constantly. Um, they're super healthy. They're very bitter. They're not, it's not a, it's like spirulina and chlorella. They're not a culinary delicacy, but they are the most powerful foods in the world. So this stuff, it doesn't always taste good, but I go back to, wow, you get the right raw food chef in there. Well, you can have some I had raw chili one time made with nuts, you know, almonds. It's just unbelievably delicious, I gotta tell you. So, um, but if you look at something that's called Carillion photography, so this is a guy named Carillion, and he discovered that if you put something, it doesn't matter what it is, on a highly charged electrical plate, that it actually, see, you see this energy that's coming off of it. And, um, and so it's pretty amazing. Well. When you look at something like, for instance, you know, a bottle or something, right, or whatever, or here's a little coffee cup somebody gave me, and uh, Sam, it's got my little guitar on it, you know, it's my guitars, and um, you'll see this kind of a dark field around, it's kind of purplish, but if you look at a raw food or a human being, you get more of what looks like an aura, okay, an aura is something, um, you always see these pictures of like, the Indians, uh, Eastern Indians, and they have the chakras, right? And I, I know a lot about that kind of stuff. And, um, you know, they you see the different energy fields going up and down, and you always see this kind of brightness that comes off of people. And, um, and that's your aura. That's the energy you're exuding. Um, and if you look at somebody, if you could take pictures of them that way, and there's different ways also. They have these aura photo, these cameras. You can take a person's aura. A little bit different technology than just the Carillion ph photography, but you can see the aura of somebody. And you can you, you look at somebody really healthy, like myself. I'm f I don't eat garbage. I don't you know I don't eat anything out of a box or a jar or a can. I'd highly recommend you avoid uh, eating things from a box or a car a jar or a can. And if you do, uh, pick it up and look at the ingredients and look very carefully at those ingredients. Um, even the ketchup that they sell in this country compared to like Canada, same, you know, Heinz, they put all this crap in, in the, in the, in the food here in the, our food has become so contaminated. So read your labels. The millennials I'm told read labels more than anybody else. Well, there you go. Go get them millennials. They're looking at and picking that up. What am I getting here? What am I putting? Same with the shampoo you buy and the soap you're putting on your body. That goes right into the shampoo, right into your scalp. Don't ever dye your hair. I mean, I've never dyed my hair or done anything, but you're putting that right into your scalp and right goes right into your brain. 
I mean, you wonder why people get dementia and Alzheimer's. What do you think? You're putting this you know, stuff right into your body. You got to look at your body as a temple, as a temple of God. And um, so, um, you know, you look at the aura of, of a food, a raw food. Now you look at a cooked food, again, we're back to that kind of dark aura, you know, because it's dead. There's nothing going on there. You've taken this alkalizing, rejuvenating substance that's full of enzymes, it's self-digesting, it's going to come right into the body, and you've turned it into mere sustenance, something that's going to keep you alive a few days, a week, a month, and it's not rejuvenating. It's just, you know, food. It's just calories. That's all you, you've reduced it to calories. And as I said, this is not the same chemical substance as you started with, okay? You stir up some... Um, some onions and some uh, garlic and some tomatoes f to, for dinner or whatever you're doing or you what you know you totally remove the nutritional substance in that food there's almost nothing left uh, I hate to tell you because like I said I would you know I, I'm a pretty good cook um, but there's other ways to make that feel that food taste good um, as I said but um, you have reduced that to calories and there's just something that's going to keep you alive a week a month at the most, that's it, um, and then you're going to be looking for more, and you're not you're not getting any anything that's rejuvenative, and again, that's what I do. I take I like today. I don't eat till noon, okay? Because breakfast the breakfast is your most important meal of the day. Again, this is propaganda. You know that that came from this Edwin Bernays book. If you look, at, he wrote a book called Propaganda. You, I think you get that book, and you can listen to it on YouTube. But that's where all this stuff com comes from. They brainwash you into buying cereal. You get up in the morning, get your Cheerios. Nothing's better than my Cheerios. There's no nutrition in there at all. You know, Cheerios is an example. You know, it just you can buy that all over the country, of course, and almost all over the world. Uh, Cheerios. Well, all looks the same, same shape, same taste. This is a highly, highly, highly processed food. There's no nutrition there. It's just uh, you know, it's just something you're used to eating um, and you got really healthy um, I forget one my father used to drink or eat every morning um, can't think of the name of it but this is one of the really healthy ones you know there's no there's nothing going on there and and food back then by the way when he was eating all these cereals um, they're not nearly as contaminated as they are now I mean and it's getting worse and worse I just let you know they're putting a lot of things in the food a lot of insects that you don't know about, powders and all this kind of stuff. Um, I eat out of my garden and I go down to, and I do a lot of sprouting in the winter, and um, I go down to the farmer's markets. I know that there's a great one in Detroit. Um, I've always heard about it and I've been to it. But, um, you know, this is a really, really good farmer's market. So get your food there because you'll, you'll know, you know, Farmer Joe and you'll know, you know, Farmer Sally and how she grew that and then that's the way you want to eat. And grow your when you do grow a garden, get heirloom seeds. Um, and you know the the entire um, seed for, um, for, for uh, seeds for everything that is grown in the world. That's owned by four companies now, four major corporations. They bought every they bought up all the other seed companies. Monsanto is one of them. Uh, this is an evil company, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, Roundup, glyphosate, it's just, this is stuff is it's everywhere. Roundup is everywhere. It's it's in your food, and they spray this stuff everywhere. And uh, of course, they feed you know the feed cows now are corn fed. Corn fed. They're, they're, these are grass grazing um, animals. You know, I always say to people, people say, "Well, you're a vegan." I said, yeah, I don't, you know, they, they almost are like offended, you know, you're a vegan, okay, they got to argue with me, and, and then they'll ask me some questions, and I'll tell them, you know, I, I have, I have some, we have something in common, see, I'm a vegan, and then all the animals you eat, they're vegans, because every animal we eat is a vegan, right, I mean, cows and chickens, and, you know, what, what are they, are they carnivores, no, and then they turn that stuff into flesh, and then you eat the flesh, they're just middlemen, and this idea that animal protein is this highly nutrient dense food, it's not. It's that's such nonsense. And um, you can live on it, you can survive on it. Um, and that, they got something called the you know the keto diet. That's the high fat diet. Now they've got the carn carnivore diet, and that's where you just eat meat. That's really the Atkins diet from 20 years ago. And that diet has been around since the 18. 
um, 1840s. That's when that started. And uh, that's called um, uh, uh, the uh, Banting was the guy who started that, and it's he was an undertaker. There you go. <laughs> He's an undertaker, and he started this high-protein diet where you just eat that. Well, you lose a lot of weight because you don't have any car carbohydrates. Uh, you know, our bodies require protein, 10% about, fat that hasn't been, you know, um, that hasn't been cooked, 10%. And then 80% carbohydrates, but not starchy carbohydrates. This is another thing, you know. I mean, if you look at the like the food pyramid, they got you eating rice and pasta and bread, and this is just garbage, you know, for the body. It tastes good, you know. I, I like bread. I like pasta. I, I, but this is not what health is. This is not what health is about. So um, it's just not healthy at all. Sorry. <clears throat> um, but again, I'm not really sorry, but I'm just I'm giving you the the news and giving you the truth, and just not as I know it, it's the truth. Period. I mean, I'm just letting you know, because as I said, at 65, you know, I'm not I'm doing pretty good. I'm doing fantastic. You know, I'm very strong. Uh, I'm a black belt in Taekwondo, and um, you know, I don't have any aches or pains. My knees are not giving away. You know, my teeth are fine. So. Um, and I'm nobody special. Anybody can do this. Anybody can do what I'm doing. It's not easy to do. It's not easy to live on a raw food diet. That's the it, to change somebody's diet. That is really the difficult thing. So um, when you start looking into this Carillion photography, if you look that up on the in the internet, um, you'll see there's all sorts of videos about that. They're they're out there. You'll see that the <clears throat> the fruit and vegetables or salad. Um, they uh, they have this high energy field. They look very colorful. Uh, you look at somebody with cancer; you, they're not going to look good because they don't have that energy. Their body's being consumed by this the deadly cancer, and there's no life there. If they're stage four cancer, then you're going to see it's a lot more um, you know um, the, you know dark than somebody who's really healthy like myself or a newborn baby. You're going to see this this aura. And, and um, if you're really healthy, you see this kind of this really great light behind you. You always see like a lot of religious figures, maybe saints, that kind of stuff, or Jesus, our Lord. Um, you see this white halo. They always depict him with this white halo. That's the aura. That's what he, you know, he was exuded around himself, this incredible energy. And that's what you're going to find in a raw fruit and vegetable. And you won't find that in, in a hamburger, and you certainly won't find it in a McDonald's french fries. Um, which is that's those are hideous, you know. They used to actually be French fries, and now I mean they they just twist everything into this to be identical. It's all got to be. You, they got to make sure that the McDonald French fries in Florida, in Southern Florida, is exactly the same as you're going to get it in Tokyo or any other place. You know, everywhere they got McDonald's, which is everywhere in the world, it's got to be the same, and it will be. Believe me, I mean they're identical. So they've got to get these particular potatoes and they've got to do all these weird things and how they grow them and then they've got to, you know, make sure and they turn out identical. And so, uh, once again, I go back to, you know, I, one little tip I'll tell you here. If you want to start on the path to health and know what health is about, stop, don't eat any fried foods. That is such poison. Um, they're delicious, right? I love falafels, I mean, and they fry foods everywhere in the world. I've traveled all over the world. They fry foods everywhere. You know, you go, out, I go you know, to Taiwan, you look at the night markets, they're fried foods. And um, because it tastes great, they taste fantastic, but they're poison and they're deadly and you got to stay away from them if you want to be healthy. Um, we, we the, the disease is the result of our own uh, habits, what we've done to ourselves. So just remember that, um, and the uh, empowering idea uh, behind that or concept is that you're in charge. You know, you're in charge of your health. So if you got sick, um, you know, chronic disease of any kind, disease does not run in our genes; it runs in our diet. So you know, mom and dad, I mean, everybody in my family, we're susceptible to heart disease and cancer. That's just, you know, that's the medical establishment. You know, telling the, again propaganda. Disease doesn't run in families. Um, it runs in dietary habits. Run in families. You know, in your family, you don't all have the same diet. You don't have all have different diet. You all eat the same food. When you sit down at dinner, 
Hey, what are we having tonight? We're having chicken. Okay, you all eat chicken. And uh, you don't sit there and have five different foods for five people. And you don't have, okay, curry foods uh, for Sally. And then we have Russian foods for, uh, for Stevie. And dad, mom and dad are going to be eating something from Brazil, Brazilian food. No, you all eat the same foods and you do it every day, every day, every day. And you develop these same diseases. I don't care if it's high blood pressure, uh, arthritis, diabetes, you know, diverticulitis, you name it. It's all, all man-made by cooking your foods. So that gives you a brief introduction to the raw food diet, why we want to live on a raw food diet. Um, I encourage you to go out and look at those, that Carillion photography I was telling you about. That'll kind of begin to let you know what's going on there with the energy force that's in that food. Some of the healthiest foods in the world that you'll ever eat are sprouts. I do a lot of sprouting in the winter. These are powerful foods. I do broccoli and I do kale and I do sprouts. Um, I just get the seeds and sprout them. I do radish. I do uh, some red clover and some alfalfa. Just, they just cost you pennies to give you a whole bunch of these sprouts. And you can always get them going. I got mine going like in these different sprouters. I've been doing that for 25 years, you know. So that's how I learned, kind of got into raw food. Somebody introduced me, Hiawatha Cromer, to uh, sprouts. And then I figured it out. I read a book by Dr. Edward Howell. I think it's called uh, Enzyme Therapy or something like that. But that that book tells you why why you want to eat en foods with enzymes and not foods that are lacking uh, enzymes. Okay, and um, you know, like I said, you start telling people that steak is not healthy, and they don't want to hear it. And I don't I, mean, I don't care what they eat. I'm not you know, I don't get into all the animal rights activists and all that kind of stuff. The quality of meat you see in the stores these days. I mean, come on, the animal protein. Again, if you're gonna eat, if you're gonna eat eggs, you know, go to the guy down the street. I mean, the farm, your neighbor, you know, that raises chickens. <laughs> you know, go get your chickens there. I mean, your eggs there. Uh, I know somebody who raises uh, beef and chickens and eggs, and um, I don't eat that stuff. But if I did, I'd at least I'd go get it from those people. I know, I know them very well. So they raise all that. So at least you know where it came from. And they're not feeding them all this garbage. But the stuff you see in your stores these days, it's just such poor quality. You know, I think, uh, and what goes on in the slaughterhouses, if, you know, the slaughterhouses, if they were made with glass walls um, and we could see inside them, we would have a world full of vegetarians. Because <laughs> okay. I think working in s former slaughter uh, house employees have created. Um, are the reason there's so many vegetarians in the world. There's not many ve vegetarians in the world, by the way. There's very few vegans, and there's very, very few raw, f raw food vegans like myself. But And I do it because I'm just always chasing after health, and I just love doing it. I have a fruit in the daytime with spirulina and chlorella, so I get protein. You always want protein with everything you eat. And then at night I do um, a salad. I like a big salad. And it's not like full of lettuce or anything. It's got a lot of powerful foods in there. I always have avocado. So anyway, these are the ways you can live to be healthy. And this is what you can do to live. And this is why we're making a whole documentary on this raw food diet and why raw foods are so incredibly important. My name is Dr. Bob McCauley. Uh, my website is watershed.net. Uh, you can email me at uh, bob at watershed.net or watershedwellness at gmail.com. And um, we're up here in, in Lansing, the Watershed Wellness Center um, on National Parkway. And it's not far from the Lansing Airport. And uh, we do have a retail location, so if you want to come in, I do consultations, that kind of thing. Um, you know, so, you know, this is what I do. And I'm really happy to be here today. I'm really happy to be involved in this documentary because the most important thing in your life, in my opinion, is making sure you have a relationship with God. Number two, you got to be healthy. People say, what about my family? Well, how can you take care of your family if you're sick? You're, ob you're obligated to, to be healthy so you can take care of your family. Anyway, so I'll see you some other time. I hope I will probably, I might do another talk like this again. Um, you know, Moselle Lang, she's got this incredible, um, this incredible raw food group that she does down in Detroit. 
area, and she can tell you more about it and everything. Uh, I've done some talks by there uh, on that, but uh, but anyway, find yourself one of those groups. Get a support group. You got to get people around you, and you will not believe how healthy you can be. Dr. Bob, I'll see you guys next time.